Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Um, so I was going through the comments on the last video about your first car, which you should buy, and I found a cool comment by Killjoy593. He asks, Kenny, do a timeline of all the cars you've owned. Would love to hear some of the stories and how you ended up with X amount of DSMs or X amount of rotary civics, etc. So, you know, I said I was going to do it next week, but I said I'm going to do it today um, because once again, I'm locked in my basement as always. I'm sorry for not doing car stuff, but hopefully I can bring you guys something interesting to talk about and kind of open up a dialogue about what cars you guys have owned. So, be sure to leave in the comments what cars you guys have owned, your favorite car. Um, if you have a funny story, be sure to leave it down below. Um, if you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment, like, do all the stuff. But I want to end up a list of all the cars that I've owned, and I've owned between 2006 to 2018, 29 cars. I might be missing one. I want to say I've done 30, um, but that's just me wanting to, but I've, I've counted them out. And to my memory, I've done 29, and I have a story for each and every one. And hopefully, I have a picture. I'm going to dig through all my pictures and show them to you as we go. So, um, I mean, technically, there is a 30th one if we're going 29, but I'm not going to count that car simply because that's not one that I actually bought and did by myself. So, the first car I'm going to start with is my 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse RS. So, it's a 428 Eclipse, so it's obviously the slower type of Eclipse. But I love the 2GB, the second gen Eclipse body style so much that that was really my first car that I bought. Um, I didn't have any taste. So like I was that the high school kid that had no taste. So like I painted the interior black and red and put like a big sub box in back. I never actually like fiberglass in the body. Um, because by the time that I got tired of doing all like, the subwoofer stuff, I started really caring about actually going fast again. So I sold my RS and I bought a 1997 Eagle Talon TSI front wheel drive. It was automatic. My friend actually now owns the car after it disappeared for like four or five years. So honestly, like there's a chance of me maybe getting it back eventually, but like that car is a pile now. It's an automatic, um, 4G63. I swapped it over to a 14B turbo, uh, and then really didn't do much. Like I didn't know much about, you know, tuning and stuff like that yet. So like, I just put a 14B turbo on it and lifted a stock boost and like enjoyed it and drove it every day until I went to college. Um, around my sophomore year of college, that's when I bought a 2002 Acura uh, RSX Type S because I was driving between Arkansas and Oklahoma a lot because I was playing college baseball. So I was playing summer ball out in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and I had to drive two hour, two and a half hours between Arkansas and Tulsa a lot more often. So like I was tired of driving a DSM and getting like 20 miles per gallon and like driving that long in a car that might not that might break down. So I sold my TSI, picked up the Type S. So I had the, the RSX Type S was up until recently the longest car I've ever owned. Um, didn't do much of anything to it. Like I pretty much left it the way it was when I bought it. Um, I had plans for what I was going to like, I added a, a AM cold air intake to it, but like that was my first foray in the Hondas and I really wasn't into them that much, but I, I just wanted a daily driver that was decently quick and had the cool motor in it. Um, so that was that, that car's only that eventful. But fast forward two years and I'm junior year in college, I'm driving this Acura Type S around and it snows in Nebraska for the first time. That's when I moved to Omaha and uh, I slid through a stop sign and said like, I can't do this. I'd always wanted a WRX STI or an Evo. I actually wanted an Evo, but um, cause I had started with DSM. So I, I started looking for Evos and I wanted an Evo really bad. And at the time I was working at a wedding video company making wedding videos and making bank. So like, that's how I jumped this, this from this $5,000 Type S to this $17,000 next car. But I slid through an intersection, started trying to find an all-wheel drive car, eventually found a 2004 Subaru WRX STI, and that was my first like nice car of our own. So I'd like divide my cars in separate tiers. But I had a 2004 WRX STI, and that was the first car I actually started getting into a lot more. So I put Detwerx 850cc injectors in it, a Walbro 255, um, did a wide band, full turbo back exhaust, didn't do an access port, did an open port, and that's when I learned, I learned the more tune on that car more than anything. So I made my own map, built, did it on E85, the car and I'm making about 350 horsepower. Um, it went out and just pretty much at the time, that was before like E85 started to become like wildly adopted by everybody on the streets. So like um, a lot of people said like it wouldn't work at the time, like E85 is going to corrode your fuel system and like all that stuff, you know, all the stuff a lot of people say. Um, like it's going to destroy your car, it's not going to make you any more power. Like that's when the news is starting to like 85 is not actually good for like, so everyone's like 85 so stupid. Put this car in 85, started destroying everybody, and nowadays like everyone runs the 85 and the WRXs and STIs in this area now. Uh, basically, to my STI, that's the car that I have that actually made me go fast. But then um, I wanted to kind of a, a play around toy car. I'd always had one car, but I wanted like a car that I could just play with and have fun with every day. So I had like a laptop, uh, an MSI GT70 gaming laptop that I got for like a grand and a half when I was in college. It's just used for college. But between then, I bought, I sold, I stopped using the laptop and started using a MacBook Pro because I was editing wedding videos at this company that required me to have a MacBook. So I had a MacBook and this gaming laptop that I never used. So I was like, does anyone want to trade a gaming laptop for a car just in like a local car group? And luckily, I found who's become one of my good friends. His name's Pedro. Um, 
he just he's a guy that like buys and sells off Craigslist full time. Like that's his only job. He just buys and sells like appliances and cars and stuff. So like his full time job is just flipping nonstop. So he goes, oh yeah, I have this Miata that I'll trade you for your laptop plus $125. And I'm just like, totally. So me and this dude met up at three o'clock in the morning in north the northern not north omaha but the northern northwest side the richer part of omaha and uh he met me at three o'clock in the morning and uh he let me drive the car around i was like oh this car's really cool i didn't expect this and then i went over to his house because i also traded him a playstation vita as well and i took the playstation vita and like it didn't power on yet because it hadn't been used in like months so like we put it on the charger and waited like an hour and a half for it to come on at the charger but we talked about initial d and all that stupid stuff like exosets he now is an exoset um Talk about stupid cars for a solid like three or four hours we became like best friends like right after that so i ended up living with pedro like a year and a half later um i still talk to him every day like he's my miata guru guy that i talk to a lot he has like if you go to his house he's like seven miatas like around his house like it's wild um but so i got the miata and that when i drove that miata that cheap miata i call it 125 125 dollar miata but it's really not but i drove that miata and it changed my entire perspective on cars so like i was like why do i have this twenty thousand dollar super sti whenever i have way more fun with this miata like 350 horsepower is cool but then when you drive like this 80 horsepower rear wheel drive like handles on rails car it changes your entire perspective so from there i took the miata and said i want something like a miata and i was getting tired of the super wrx sti community because it's full of a whole bunch of idiots like no one knows what they're talking about like the 85 thing went off like a year and a half and it was stupid and, like everyone was it was it was dumb so i got out of the wrx sti scene and basically put it for trade um someone goes i'll trade you a 93 rx7 for it and i go oh well, i didn't even know rx7s are even like in my price range i thought rx7s are super priced like i thought they were 25 30 grand but this guy goes no, i'll trade you for an sti so i go all right cool so he goes oh yeah well i'm in iowa i'm in council Bluffs. i was living in kansas at the time going to school and i basically shot a wedding um one night and i drove from topeka the kansas city shot a wedding from 8 a.m in the morning to 11 o'clock at night got in my car again in the SCI, I drove from Kansas City up to Council Bluffs, Iowa, which is a three hour trip. Got to Iowa at two o'clock in the morning. Um, my wheel almost fell off, that's a whole other story. And um, after that, I, like, I, I slept at these, this dude I've never met's house. I slept at his house overnight, woke up, we went over to what is now, what was Matt Vincent's, my my buddy who owns Rodish Performance, his, his garage, his own house. I didn't know him at the time, I literally knew nobody. And like checked out this guy's car he looked at my car and i was like you know i'll trade the rx7 no big deal but then he sat there and like talked or thought to himself for a solid like seven hours trying to convince himself to take the sti he's like it's way rougher shape than i thought but like it wasn't i told him I had minor hail damage and like a million photos of the car of everything he's like it does, it's not it's not a good condition like blah 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 and like i was like no like he's like it was a whole whole big dispute Basically, he was obviously not gonna let go of his car. He was too attached to it because, like, he went on to say he was gonna trade like seven times and never did. Like, he ended up titling him another person. Like, never traded his car off. Ended up having to sell it because he moved, but um, didn't trade for the car. So, like, basically, I said, well, I'm not gonna waste my time. Whatever. Went back to Kansas after he said no. I, I was literally in Council Bluffs like 10 hours. Went back to Kansas. Um, when I was in Topeka. Looked on Craigslist, found a black RX7, an FD in Wichita. I was like, all right, cool. That's the car I'm going to go get. So I hit up the guy and said, hey, you want to trade an STI for an RX-7? He goes, yeah, sure, totally. Drove over to Wichita, get to the car. Don't know anything about RX-7 at the time. Know nothing. I have videos like this didn't exist. There was no YouTube channels. Like, RX-7 Club, like, I was only dabbling in at the time. I didn't know much. I was just kind of learning, getting a feel for the car. Didn't have any RX-7 friends. Got this FD, pulled up. Um, the car is beautiful. And there's, some, there's minor cosmetic issues. Like, some of the paint was a little iffy, whatever. But, like, it wasn't big. Like, the car was clean. And I get to the car. I drive it around, it drives all right, it boosts nice, like everything's cool. I, he drives the STI, of course it drives great, like there was no problems with it. We trade cars, I drive the car back from um, from Wichita to Topeka, stop at a gas station, and the car is idling. Now that I know what idling, an RX and idles weird sounds like, now I look back and that was idling weird, but I, at the time I didn't know, I thought it was sloping, so he said it was street ported. Um, so we, I pull over to the gas station, I take a video of the car, the car is like loping and I was like, wah, wah, wah. and i'll post a video of it now um the car is like idling like like it sounds really aggressive and stuff and like i was like oh yeah that's really cool but then i found out it was a little compression but um drive the car to topeka daily drive the car for a solid like two or three months um go back to oklahoma for a photo shoot with my buddy lewis and then the car stops running like multiple times or taking photos and stuff so i go oh, i guess the car has a little compression because i kind of been like looking because like there was a little minor idling issues and stuff trying to figure out like maybe it was low compression or not find out the car's low compression after a compression test 
pull the motor out, send it to my buddy Matt. Um, Matt takes it apart, like calls me like the next day and goes like, I got some bad news for you, dude. And I was like, what? He goes, this motor is shot. And like, he basically opened it up and found out the oil metering pump uh, lines were all broken. So like there was no oil being injected into the car. All the housings and irons and rotors and e-shop, everything was destroyed. I had pictures of it. It was the worst condition engine ever. So basically, um, uh, Matt goes, I can get you all new parts. So I, he basically, I pay for all new irons, housings, rotors, e-shop. I pay for everything brand new, not brand new, but I buy new stuff for it. And, uh, um, he goes, this is how much it's going to cost. I go, oh, well, I looked at his Facebook and realized he was getting married. And I go, oh, you're getting married. By the way, I'm a wedding videographer. I do professional wedding video. He goes, oh, I said, you want to trade my wedding video for an engine rebuild? He goes, totally. So he ends up trading me my wedding video for a half bridge port, uh, 13B REW studded. Um, it was a built, built motor. There's a whole long story that goes in that. I'll tell that story another day, probably in the next story time. Um, during the time that I have my FD, I had that Miata. I ended up trading my Miata for a 1990 Volvo 740 Turbo Wagon, which is the dopest car I've ever owned. It had cut springs, like it was slammed on the ground. It was really fun to drive, super comfortable. Not much for gas mileage. The speed didn't read over 45 miles an hour, but like. It was great. I love that car to death. I kind of want another one, honestly. Maybe you'll see us build one on this channel. If you guys want to see that, that'd be cool. Um, but sold the Volvo 740 Turbo Wagon, traded for a guy I went to English class with for his girlfriend's Toyota Corolla. Oh, sorry, I traded for his Kawasaki Ninja 600. And then he gave me his girlfriend's 1993 Corolla with the car for free because the Corolla didn't run. So I'll trade you my bike for this car because my girlfriend needs a car to get around work. I said, no big deal. I traded the Volvo, which had piston slap, which is normal for red block, um, and get the, the bike. I drive the bike around. I had never driven a bike before. I start driving the bike around a little bit and then look at the Corolla and find out it's a fuel pump that's wrong with it. So I order a new $20 fuel pump off Rock Auto, drop it in. The car had 274,000 miles on it. Hadn't had an oil change for four years. Um, air filter was everything. Was, this car was dusty. Um, the paint was all destroyed. It had dents everywhere. Like it was a terrible condition car. That being said, I drove the car for a year, put 35,000 miles on it, never changed the oil. <laughs> and drove it everywhere. I drove between Kansas and Omaha and Kansas and Oklahoma City and Oklahoma and Dallas, Texas and everywhere. I drove that thing everywhere. It got 35 to 40 miles per gallon. Still had AC, still had cruise control, still had power steering. I loved that car. I called it the Ninja Rolla. It was amazing. And then I ended up moving to Omaha again for another reason. Like I'm not keeping track of where I am at the time, but like I moved up to Omaha and then my buddy Pedro, who I bought the original Miata from, has a 93 Turbo Miata. And I say, I want that. He ends up selling it to somebody else. And then I sell my Corolla and then buy the 93 Turbo Miata from the person that Pedro sold it to. Get it back. It had some problems. I just had to replace the O2 sensor on it. And then it ran great after I did that. And there was no problems. I had to change the water pump too. Like after those two things, it ran great. I drove back to Oklahoma because I moved back for a girlfriend. Pro tip, don't ever move anywhere for girls because that's a terrible idea. Got the Miata back. Um, so the F2 at the time, so like I'm driving two turbo mods, it's around, it's really cool. And then eventually I go, I'm tired of the turbo mod, I want something comfortable that has AC power steering, I can like sit down and drive quietly. So I trade my turbo Miata for a 1990 E36 BMW. Um, that car runs for, it runs well, like I didn't have a problem with it. I did have one problem where I was driving down the street and the nut off my alternator fell off on the middle of the road. So like it dropped the nut, which dropped the belt and the belt got tangled up in uh in something else and i forgot what it was basically the belt got tangled up in something so then i can no longer put ac back on the car without like buying a new something i forgot what it was entirely i completely forgot but basically that belt got all tangled up so i ended up trading my bmw for a 93 civic coupe which is one of the cleanest civics i've ever owned up before i bought this white hatch super mint freshly painted i traded it for the bmw drove it around without a problem uh that was just the just the daily driver i ended up trading that car for a 1999 ek hatch the b20 vtech turbocharged uh motor swap so like that car was dope i drove it for maybe a week it had no exhaust and basically what had happened was i was watching on facebook for a while and i saw this 99 eclipse gst pop up and i was like i love dsms i've always wanted like a nice clean one this dude had one that was mint, the mintest DSM I had ever seen in my entire life. And he had it listed for like $4,500. And I was sitting there watching it. And like the problem is it had 299,000 miles on the chassis or maybe it was 199. 
It was 199 or 299. It was a lot of miles. It was 199. 199,000 miles on the chassis. So everyone's kind of like, oh, whatever. It was 199,000 all original DSM. And um, well, it was slightly modified. But like it was everything pretty much that was important was original. And uh, the Eclipse, um, they, uh, he had this for $4,500 for at least two months. And I was just watching it, like, watch everyone talk trash. And like, this car's good value, whatever. And then one fateful night, it was about a week after I got the, the turbo hatch, the guy goes, I have to sell the car. And the next day, $2,000, someone come pick it up. This is at 1030 in the, at night, 1030 p.m. This dude lists this car up. I message him at 1031 and say, I am going to buy your car. I have cash in hand. Uh, actually, I did not have cash in hand. I said I had PayPal ready. I had pay, I used PayPal credit to buy this car. But I go, it's. I will buy your car. He goes, okay. Well, I said, I will drive there right now. He goes, all right, cool. It is 1031 at night. This guy lives in Springfield, Missouri. I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you know anything about those two locations, Springfield, Missouri is about four and a half hours away from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I called my buddy, whose name's Taylor. I called Taylor and said, Taylor, do you want to drive to Springfield with me? He goes, okay. So we get in his his mom's car, drive from Tulsa to Springfield, Missouri at 1030 at night, get there at two o'clock in the morning. The dude opens the garage. It is the mintest DSM I have ever seen in my entire life. The mintiest, most perfect one you'll ever see. That is a bone stock that hasn't been redone body work. The cleanest one you'll ever see in your entire life. And you'll probably see that car again on this channel soon because I'm talking to the person who owns it now and I want to buy it back. But it's the mintiest DSM I've ever seen. I get the car, I look at it and go, this is it, game over. I get in the car, we drive it all the way back from Springfield to Tulsa, get back at seven o'clock in the morning, and like, <laughs> dude, that car was beautiful, perfect. The problem is though, on the way back, I did hit a raccoon on the highway on the way back. So like, the the driver's side fog light and the, the front bumper spider web and the paint a little, like it was only if you hit it like a flashlight, you could see it. But, like, it was enough that if I knew it was there that it mattered, but like, that was the only cosmetic problem. Like the head, headliner drooped barely. Like the the driver seat had like a busted seam in it. But like other than that, which are all minor issues for a car that's 20 years old, like it was perfect. Like perfection. Um, and I drove that car the entire time I lived in Tulsa before I got a job offer in Omaha. And then when I got a job offer in Omaha, I said I'm not gonna drive a DSM every day, just knowing that how sketchy it can be and put the rain and stuff. So like I don't want to take this nice mint car and take it up to Omaha and get it all salty and rusty. So I sold that DSM that I bought for two thousand dollars for forty five hundred dollars to my friend Dustin. Dustin now has it. He put a built four G sixty three in it, so like it's a built car now. And uh, I sold that and basically bought just a Beater ninety six Civic Coupe that was an automatic. Um, drove that up to Omaha. Uh, my buddy Pedro goes, "I have this ninety nine Miata that stands out. Do you want to buy this?" I said yes. So I sold my Civic, bought this ninety nine Miata, and at the same time that I bought my ninety nine Miata, well actually let me go back. So before I moved to Tulsa. Um, basically, all the V8 people were talking smack on, um, all V8 people were talking smack on the Honda guys when I was at Humble Performance. They were just talking smack on the Honda guys. You guys don't race digs, blah, 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 blah. So Alex Pagan, my buddy, gets the great idea to go, we should build an all-wheel drive turbo hatch. I go, that is the best idea I've ever had. He goes, we'll put a K24 in it, make it all-wheel drive, put a fat turbo on it, all this stuff. All you gotta do is sell your DSM first. I said, all right, all you gotta do is sell your FD first. I said, all right, cool. I sell my FD. I basically get 15 for it. And now I have 15 grand to build this all wheel drive turbo hatch. Get a call from Omaha from the wedding company to work at. And they basically say, Do you want to run this company? And I say, Yes, I do. So I leave Tulsa with that 15 grand and buy another FD because I didn't want to build a car in Tulsa while living in Omaha. So they, uh, I, I buy another FD from my buddy Matt. Uh, and basically have that FD and it never ends up running. I just have it for a while. I, just, it ends up, I take the motor out of it and sell the shell and trade that one off later. But um, I had the FD, we call that car Rosa. Um, and then I bought the 99 Miata from my buddy Pedro. And then that car was stands out. It was really cool. I daily drove it for a while. Sold it to a guy from Tulsa who drove up and trailered it back. He ended up throwing a rod out of the block within like two weeks of it because he ran out of oil and the block went straight through the, the rod went straight through the block. And then he tried to blame me for it. And I basically told him, I told him it burned oil and he said I didn't. Then I sent him a picture. Then he disappeared after he saw the picture. But when I, before I traded the Miata off, I bought my first actual grown up car, which is a 2006 BMW 325X Sideway, which I still have to this day. And I'm trying to sell actually right now. Um, but I bought that. That's my daily driver. It's a six speed, fully loaded sports package, like navigation. Like it's just nice AC, power steering, heater. Like it's, <laughs> I'm not used to having a car with everything in it. It's like, it's really nice. And then I went on a spree of buying Mazda RX-7. So this time I have the 93 RX-7. 
and then I buy what was the original Project Poverty car. So I bought 1990 Mazda RX-7 convertible with a turbo two swap in it. Um, after I sold, I sold my Miata and bought the 90 RX-7 convertible, which had a turbo two swap in it. That's that's similar to where Poverty came from. And uh, so I took that convertible, drove around for a while. We built the engine of the convertible and tried to build that car. That's why Poverty is the name is Pavert Convertible T. <laughs> So that was the name. That was why it's called Poverty. Um, took the convertible, and then at the time, me and my buddy Jared said we want to build an autocross car or like a, a track car. So we bought the coupe shell from a guy in Oklahoma for five hundred dollars. The Poverty shell, the one you see, the white, hat, the white coupe. Bought that from Oklahoma. I buy it during Christmas break. Got it back up, put it in storage, or whatever. It's just kind of sitting by the side of the shop. We'll get to it eventually. I had an NA motor that I bought for the Miata because I was gonna do a rotary Miata at the time too. I didn't mind doing it. So I just had an S5 NA motor, which I still have. So if anyone wants to buy an NA motor, I still have it. Um, but uh, sold, uh, basically took the convertible's motor out, the to full turbo two swap out, and bought another convertible. I bought a black convertible, a 1988 convertible. And said, I'm going to take Poverty because it was a beat up shell and put it in a nice convertible shell and then have like a nice version of Poverty's turbo two convertible. And before I pulled the motor out, Matt just goes, why don't you take this entire built turbo two motor and put it in that, that gutted hat, the gutted coupe. I go, that is the best idea you've ever had. So basically that day, I pull the motor out of the convertible, drop it right into the, the, sh the coupe shell, and then swap that car over in about a week. And then that's how poverty was born. There is no poverty. So then I just had a black convertible sitting on the side. And then at the same time, so I had the red convertible, the Rose FD, the black convertible, the poverty shell, and then at the same time I bought a 1979 SA RX-7, so I bought a first gen RX-7, and had that at the same time. I sold the first gen within about two weeks of owning it, because I, I ended up saying, I, that's too much work, I have too many RX-7s going right now. Basically I was filling up our lot with my cars, and I was tired of having my trash sitting in our shop, so like, I started selling all my cars. So I ended up selling the blue 79 RX-7, convertible shell for a hundred dollars to a friend who said he was going to put it in and build a car out of it but he never did he just ended up selling it and flipping it um so don't sell cars to friends for cheap um i um at the, so i had the black convertible still the poverty and then rosa and then ended up buying i, I found a you know cosmo for sale in chicago um and, and i was i was talking to this dude for a solid like month and a half two months and uh i go to maryland for world cup finals and on the way back, I said, I have the cash in hand to come pick up your car. I will fly to Chicago. I'll redirect my flight from Maryland to Chicago to pick up your car and drive it back. And he goes, all right, cool. So I land in Nashville, or I land in uh, Charlottesville, North Carolina, and say, okay, I'm about to redirect my flight. He goes, oh, no, the car just sold today. And I was like, mother, I literally just told you I have the cash. I had five grand cash in hand ready to buy that car that day. And he sold out from under me after we'd been talking for months about it. So I basically flew back to Omaha disappointed and they said, screw it. And that's when I went out and bought the 10th anniversary RX-7 the next day. <laughs> so I bought the 10th anniversary RX-7 with the Cosmo RE swap. And it was kind of like, it was like a Cosmo. -y. It made me feel like it was Cosmo and drove the 10th anniversary around. Actually, I didn't drive the 10th anniversary. I bought it. The dude said that he couldn't get it running. It was built three years ago. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So basically I bought it, towed it to our shop. We put it on the, we put it on the lift, looked underneath it and found out that he switched the starter wires around. So they were wrong. They weren't grounded correctly. So we grounded the starter, turned the car on and it started within 30 seconds. Like it ran perfect. And there's a video of that too. Wait, wait, what was, what was the intro on that? What? How many years has it been We're not starting for two years, it's starting in 30 minutes. All right, let's Kenny, do this. Did you build this? No. Okay. <laughs> yep. Woo! Out the, the 10th anniversary started running again, and then like there weren't any really major problems. I had to go back through it and kind of fix some stuff with it. There weren't any major stuff like, for instance, like we look at the turbocharger and the the oil return line like came off the turbo and went in a loop like this into the front cover, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! So like I pulled the turbo out and the turbo is just shot, like it's annihilated. So like I had a bad 6266, which I still have, um, and. Uh, so I, I took it all apart, redid the entire thing, put my 67, 66 on it, um, and basically ran it like that for a while. Um, but there was no problems with it really. Then I sold it to actually a subscriber of ours, Seth. He has it now. He's in Kearney, Nebraska. 
and I hope it's doing well for him. I think he had the, he fixed like a boost like from uh, one of the inner cooler pipes. Other than that, I don't know if he's had any issues. He hasn't messaged me. Um, but I ended up trading my 93 RX-7 for a right hand drive shell, a shell that was converted over the right hand drive that was done not very well, but it was done. And then I sold that to a guy for nothing, like $4,500. Some guy bought that. Um, so I was out. I have no more FDs after that. And then I, after I, and then I sold my 10th anniversary to the guy from Carney. So I sold my, RF, my, I sold my right hand drive and my 10th anniversary roughly the same week, if not within two weeks. Then that's when I started going. I'm gonna build a Civic. So I bought a 1999 um, EK Coupe Civic. <laughs> this is getting really long. I'm almost done. Don't worry. Bought an EK Coupe Civic uh, with an H22 A4 swap, so a Prelude swap in it. Um, had that car for a minute and said, you know, I want to build a big turbo GSR and put it in that. So like I said, I was like, well, maybe this isn't the best shell. So I sold the H22 swap, bought a GSR swap from my buddy for $500, bought a 1993 Civic hatch after I sold the H22 EK, had the green hatch, was going to build that. Um, it was just a single cam auto and basically said, I don't want to do an auto the manual swap. So I'd rather just get a clean shell. So I found a 2000 Civic coupe shell. that was like clean, like a black EK. So I'll swap that into it. So like I sold my green one, my 93 Civic hatch, bought a 2000 Civic coupe. And then just said, you know, I want, it had like a minor, minor body dings here and there. And I was like, I want to mint the mintiest EG or EK shell, preferably EK hat shell that I could possibly find. So I looked in the Omaha Honda group, which is impossible to find a clean Honda in case you're wondering. Look in that group for a solid two to three months. Don't find anything. Go to the Tulsa import and domestic group and say, hey, I want a, the cleanest patch that is possibly in this area. Who has it? I have money. This guy goes, I have one. So I said, all right, cool. I gave, um, he goes, I want $2,800, so no big deal. The problem is that I'm in Nashville right now. I will. I was on a shoot in Nashville. I said, I'll be back in Omaha on Friday and I will drive down and pick up the car on Saturday morning. He goes, all right, cool. So I messaged a buddy of mine who's Ben, the guy that's in the Skyline video, the guy that has a really cool um, silver Skyline that he imported from Japan when he was there. Um, this is how I met him, actually. He, he actually hit me up and make a video for him. I said, all right, yeah, like I'll give him the price that I, that I wanted to charge him. He goes, all right, cool. And basically I'm in Nashville and say, hey, dude, do you want to not pay for that that uh, that video and help me out? He goes, all right, what do you want me to do? I said, can you drive me to Tulsa, Oklahoma at midnight to Oklahoma to pick up this EG hatch? He goes, all right, cool. So I here's the timeline. I land in Nashville at 1130, get my bags, walk out of the airport at 1159. This dude is waiting for me at the airport. I walk out of the airport, get in his truck. We I've never met this dude in my entire life. <laughs> Just some random guy that wanted a video done. Get in his truck. We drive eight hours down from Omaha, Nebraska, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Get there. I message the guy Logan and say, hey, we're here to pick it up. He goes, I'm not going to be there for another two, two, three to four hours. I said, no big deal. We'll just sign to sleep here. So we slept in a Tulsa at Humble Performance's lot for a few hours. Dude shows up with the Civic. I get in the Civic and drive the Civic all the way back from Tulsa to Omaha in about nine hours. We had we took a stop to sleep. Um, got 55 miles per gallon in a Civic. And then, uh, yeah, so I ended up with the white. That's how I have the white Civic now. And then um just recently i was i was like i said i've been looking for a cosmo for about a year and a half if not i've really been looking for two years but i found that one the year before that was supposed to be in chicago i wanted to buy that and i'm going through so i actually went down to texas um to go shoot the final form video if you guys have seen that already i shot the final form uh fd uh sevens day video and while i was there i met a guy who had a 1990 unos cosmo with a three rotor in it and i was like how much do you want he gave me the price and um, I ended up talking to him for a while, for about two, three months, trying to work out a way to pay for it. Cause like I didn't, I didn't have the cash on hand to buy it right at the time. It's like, hey, whatever, hold it, whatever, blah, 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 blah. He goes, I'm not gonna hold it, I just gotta sell it. It's like, all right, no big deal. If you're just gonna sell it, I'm gonna keep looking. I find what I now have, the black uh, Unos Cosmo. Like I wanted the three order one, but I knew what I was gonna do. I was gonna make the three order car black, put it on BBS LMs and lower it. And that's what I was gonna do no matter what. So like. I found this Unos Cosmo that was a 13B that was literally what I was going to do to the Cosmo, the 20B, and said, I can either save the money now and buy the Cosmo with the body already the way I want it to be, or I can get the 20B car, pull the motor apart, rebuild it for the same price it would cost to buy another 20B just for a 13B model, put it together, then do the paint and the wheels and the body and whatever. So I decided to do the cheaper route and bought the 13B model that I'll put a 20B in with time versus buying the 20B and then trying to make it look like what I want later. Um, so. That's kind of how I've got all my cars. There's a whole bunch of stories behind them. This video is really long. This is probably the longest video channel I was ever going to post. Um, but like I said, that's why I've won 29 cars. Um, 
and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, it's a really long video, long form, but but hopefully there was something entertaining. Um, like I said, leave me a leave me a comment down below. What's your favorite car story? What's your favorite car you ever owned? How many cars have you owned? Um, but what's your dream car as well? But if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I'm sorry it's really long. Hopefully it was really cool to know my history of cars, and hopefully you get a little insight of what I'm looking at. Um, like I said, I'm trying to sell one of my cars right now, so. Um, Maybe I'll buy a Mazda RX-8. I don't know. I've been thinking about doing it just so I can show you how much I hate them. But I think we'll have to see. But also, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, I'll see you guys later.